naturally one will be happy, should be happy. Nigerians are happy about it. Uh, I call it uh, local government emancipation uh, um, judgment because it has really emancipated the local government from you know the shackles of uh, the past. So, and I hope that the local government uh, officials will uh, seize the opportunity, will look at it as an opportunity to develop their various local governments. Well, the ball is in the court of the governors. Let, uh, let us see what they will come out with. But the judgment is clear as to what they should do. The judgment is clear as to what consequences will attach to failure or refusal to follow the judgment of the Supreme Court, which takes immediate effect. Well, it's been described as a landmark judgment. A long time coming, really. But how is everyone receiving it, particularly at the very top level of the legal profession? Let's get insights from a senior advocate of Nigeria, constitutional lawyer and human rights activist, Professor Michael Zekume, joins us live from our Abuja studio. Uh, good morning, Prof. I know that you've written severally, campaigned about this, and finally, it seems to have happened. We've had three national conventions. They've spoken about this, but still, this malignant tumor lingered, stubborn cancer, call it whatever. But for you, are you celebrating like every other person or you are still a bit cautious as a result of this judgment? Yes, I'm not cautious. I'm celebrating. Indeed, yesterday I made an outing on it, um, which has gone viral, uh, celebrating the Supreme Court on this judgment. And I'm surprised about the rocos and Bruhaha generated from certain quarters over a judgment that shredded of everything. He's simply saying, local government, you have your independence back. I always like to discuss in an attempt towards nation building issues by situating them from an historical perspective. Remember, that there were three regions in Nigeria. The Western region, Northern region, and Eastern region. By 10th of August, 1963, the Midwest region was excised or created out of Western region through a popular plebiscite referendum of the people, those having four regions. Under Section 140 of the 1963 Republican Constitution. All the regions shared from proceeds of products produced in their respective regions. Cocoa in the western region, cotton, highs, and skin, and the famous Kano Granol Pyramid in the north, and oil palm produced in the south, I mean in the east, and rubber and timber, the then Midwest region, which later became Bender State and now Delta and Edo states. Now, 50% was paid to the region that had that product. 20% was paid to the federal government at the center. And 30% was paid into a distributable account from which all the regions, including the region that had already taken its 50% shared. That was the situation until the military push of 15th January 1966, led by Major Kaduna Uzo Guchukuma and other young military officers. Then Gowon created 12 states. From the 12 states, we, today we have 36 states. Now, we also have 774 local government areas. You can have this creation we have the federal government, the states, the local governments in sections 2 and 3 of the 1999 Constitution. But by 1976, the system of local government was established in Nigeria, which has been given imprimatur, constitutional recognition by section 7 of the 1999 Constitution, which provides that a system of democratically elected governments shall be ensured and that state governments 
can only make laws that ensure that these local governments are democratically elected in terms of their structure, finances, and functions. The question is, how many tiers of government do we have by this historical background that I've given? We have three tiers of government. The federal government, the state governments, and the local governments. Three tiers. In 2014, we fought frantically to make it two tiers so that states which are the federated units will be the second tier. But of course, you know the over 600 recommendations of the 2014 National Conference have not been looked into, except things like uh, the National uh, um, Anthem, which I also humbly, with all respect, spearheaded. Now, Section 162 of the 1999 Constitution provides for how monies should be received and distributed. Section 4, or Section 5 rather, imperiously declares that money or allocations standing to the credit of local government councils shall be paid to the states. What was that for? For the benefits of the local government areas. Then subsection 6 of section 162 says, there shall be a state joint local government account into which this money shall be paid. In other words, the states were just being made vehicles, messengers, post agents to send this money to the local government councils. But that has not been the case. What has been happening is that after the federal government takes its own, the states take their own, but because this money is paid into a joint account warehoused by the states, they again will lay the ones, the sons meant for the local government areas. In an article I wrote on the 17th of October, 2020, I declared them, I said, the states will lay like bandits the allocation meant for the local government councils. I wasn't a fantastic fan of the Buhari government style, but that was one instance I praised President Buhari, for issuing Order 10, Executive Order 10, who said monies standing to the benefit of federal courts and state courts, right. which, was, which is supposed to be paid to the NGC National Judicial Council for them, but which were being relayed by the governors consigning Local government uh, uh, concerning state courts should be paid directly to the heads of these state courts. And I welcome that decision. So substitute state courts for local government councils. So I think this is a judgment that is salutary, that should actually be celebrated. Because like the Attorney General has just said, it led or it has led to the emancipation of local government councils from the accelerating grip of states. The local government councils All right, bro. are nearest to the grassroots. Bro, if I may bust they are in, in charge of covets. If I may bust they are in, in charge bro. of maternities, dis dispensaries. Yeah. My, my apologies, Prof. You, you've, you've literally walked us through history, and we really appreciate this. And of course, uh, discerning individuals will say this is applaudable on one hand, but we're also a bit cautious because first and foremost, the governors are silent since this judgment came, and some people are alluding to the fact that uh, this may be a legislation that will be upheld because it's coming from the apex court, referencing our grand norm, which is our constitution. Implementation is a question I want to ask you. Some are saying 
I know a former senator who says now that, jokingly says, what will not happen is that when local government chairmen who are installed by these governors receive monies now, they will call the governor and say, okay, oh governor, how do we distribute it? So how do we ensure that the governors, with all sense of respect, don't go around the corner to see, get the money one way or the other? Well, it is for the local government council chairman to now stand up. In fact, I see the judgment as empowering the local government council chairman by taking some powers from the state governments. The state governments send their commissioners for finance to Abuja at the end of every month to go and share money for the states coming from a distributable account. Don't forget that in Nigeria, we only share. We don't care to know how the cake is baked. We only share the national cake. What it means is that local government council chairmen have been empowered by the judgment to also travel to Abuja, where we all go to, to sit down with the state government, governors, and the minister and say, what is our own share? Instead of their fate being decided by proxy by the state governments, governors, who will take the money and then seize part of it at source, remitting to the state, uh, uh, to the local government councils what they feel. By the way, I thought we should be celebrating on the ground that this is so, so going to seed away from the parts, from the allocations of the federal government. Because local government chairman can now see to argue that what you are saying is due to us is not actually due to us. It's not what we should have. What is the federal government doing with the kind of money it is having? 62 point 68.68% uh, of national revenue and all the 36 states are having 26.72% while the whole 774 local government areas are having 20.60% of our national revenue. I think what we have is a, an over bloated federal government that has been over pampered with too much money. That is why everybody fight and die to go to the center at Abuja rather than staying in the states or even staying in local government areas. There's too much money at the center. And this money should be distributed to states and should go to the local government areas in Nigeria. If the federal government did not have too much money, for example, why, when we are crying that the government should even shed its weight, its behemoth and elephantine weight, why are we creating a new ministry of livestock? For what? Towards what? Livestock could just be made a department of the Ministry of Agriculture. Because when you create a ministry of livestock, what you have done, you are going to have permanent secretaries. You are now going to have special advisors. You are now going to have senior special assistants who will have special assistants, who will have personal assistants. There will be drivers. There will be cleaners. You have different layers of government building up. Instead of shedding, a, a ministry like that should not be an autonomous ministry, but should just be an arm, just a department or the Ministry of Agriculture. You can even collapse Ministry of Agriculture with water resources and livestock and forestry so that we have one ministry. You can see what is going on in Kenya. After the people took their destiny in their hands, William Rotu has panicked. He has just dissolved his entire cabinet, including the Attorney General, leaving only the Foreign Affairs Minister, and right. one or two others is going to reconstitute because the people said, your government is too expensive. He has stopped all budgetary allocations to the office of the first lady, second lady, third lady, whatever you call them, foreign travels, purchase of new vehicles, refurbishment of, of, of infrastructure, because the people were being 
made and tasked with $2.7 billion excessive finance bill act, well, which was meant to even tax their bread. So I think this judgment to me, by this judgment, the Supreme Court, who said it was using a progressive interpretative device. That's why I would call it. It's a progressive interpretation. Right. By looking at what was this money meant for? It was meant for the local government councils. Where is it now? It's being warehoused by the states. And all that the Supreme Court is saying is, look, this money can be paid or should be paid to the local government councils through the, uh, the states. Well, governors, let, if I well, since you have been now, abusing this process, uh, prof, since you have been number abusing of issues, this process, uh, we are not going like to, to send it directly you. to them right. to enjoy. Uh, quite a number of issues we'd like to raise with you, Prof. Uh, the other part of the judgment is one that concerns the uh, election, or at least the dissolution of elected uh, local government chairmen and replacing them with caretaker chairmen. And it ties to what you were talking about uh, happening in Kenya. For example, in River State, uh, we saw some of the caretaker chairmen appointing aides. Uh, one of them appointed a hundred aides, uh, according to the statement that was put out. And people were wondering, what are you doing with 100 aides? So we've seen states that have since uh, put in caretaker chairman in place. The recent or most recent is River State. So let's try to operationalize this new judgment with what is playing out in River State. So they are caretaker chairman. The court says money should not be paid to the caretaker chairman and the state should not dissolve local government and replace with caretaker chairman. So what does that do? currently now to those caretaker chairmen, for example, in River State and perhaps in other states? The judgment is clear. The Supreme Court is trying to rescue the local government councils, which are supposed to be democratically elected under Section 7 of the Constitution. The Constitution is clear about it, how local governments should come into being. And where state governors. It's not only in River State. It has been going on in every state of the Federation. Have we not witnessed it since 1999? Governors dissolving local government councils that were duly elected by the people, for the people and by the people, and then putting their minions and their surrogates as chairman, caretaker. There's nothing like caretaker, chairman in the Constitution. It is an aber aberration. It's, it doesn't go, it doesn't happen. What the Supreme Court is saying is, hello, henceforth, we only pay money directly to local government council chairmen. But these local government council chairmen themselves have to be democratically elected, not handpicked by governors as caretaker chairmen. I think the judgment to me it's quite clear enough. And in fact, the Supreme Court gave injunctions restraining governors from further um, uh, dissolving democratically elected councils, council chairmen, and then appointing their own. And said this should never be done, and that this judgment should be obeyed. So what it means is that governors who presently have caretaker chairmen should go to the drawing board by ensuring that elections are held to bring in democratically elected council chairmen, not handpicked one, and that it is those ones that we enjoy this largesse from the Federation account under Section 162, subsection 5 and 6. If you are caretaker, it means you will not enjoy it. What it means is that the state will share their own. Quite all right. The federal government will share their own. Those for the local governments, if they are not democratically elected for now, should be warehoused until such states get uh, uh, democratically elected government. I think the judgment is clear enough. That is why I said I think it should be celebrated. I do not see what is difficult there at all. The Supreme Court was clear. See, I'm using, we are using progressive interpretation. What was the mischief? What, why did the Attorney General go to the, uh, uh, to the Supreme Court? to invoke its original jurisdiction if money was going down to the local governments. Local governments, if you go, I'm from a, a community, 
in a local government. If you go to the local government chairman, she will tell you that we don't have money because the governor has not given us money, which is a misnomer because it is not the governor that is supposed to give them money. The money is supposed to be their entitlement, their birthright, coming directly from the same source from which the governor himself also shares. But because they have been made mere appendages by state governors, they don't have their money. The so, poor people, populace cry to them so with prof, sick children. They can't do anything because they have no money to use. So, prof, Now the money will now go to them. The question of how to hold the state, local, I mean the local government chairman accountable is another thing. The people will go for their jugular. They live with them. They know their houses. They will go and meet them. So I said, we know that such and such X amount has been paid to you, to your coffers. What are you doing with the money? They will now hold them accountable. So, so Prof, as clear as that judgment is, as clear as it is, recall that ahead of this time, there was a seeming consensus that uh, Section 6, which provided for um, the joint account, Jack, be amended before uh, the country could proceed uh, with, um, you know, uh, local government autonomy. Should we consider this provision of the Constitution dead now, given that the Supreme Court, being the highest court in the land, has so ruled? Yeah, the, the, I mean, to me, the, <laughs> a law is not what is on the paper until it is interpreted. Um, the prophecies of what the court will do are nothing more pretentious. It's what I mean by law. That was how it was interpreted by great uh, jurists. The Supreme Court has made its progressive interpretation of the law to cure a mischief that has been there. So we now know what Section 162, subsections 3, 4, 5, and 6 are saying. So the question of amendment to me becomes otios, becomes superfluous. Um, I don't think you need any amendment, except, of course, don't forget that judgments of the Supreme Court themselves can also be overridden by the National Assembly under Section 4. Because mm -hmm. they have the power to make laws for the peace, order, and good government of Nigeria. So the National Assembly may decide to amend the Constitution going through uh, 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 section, uh, section, uh, section 9 of the, of the Constitution as to how, to how to amend. And if they so want to amend it and remove certain sections or insert certain sections, that's a, but you cannot use an act of parliament act of the National Assembly to amend provisions of the Constitution. Only the Supreme Court can, through purposive interpretation, through progressive interpretation, to remove certain mischiefs, can say what the law is, and it has declared what the law is. And don't forget that the Supreme Court <coughs> is the apex court of the land. And it makes it clear that we are Final. So if, if I may come in there now. we are infallible. We are infallible because we are final. That was in the case of Adego K Motors uh, Limited. So it has made the judgment clear. Those who are not satisfied cannot go to another Supreme Court because we don't have a second Supreme Court. All that they can do now, perhaps, is to go to the National Assembly to say we don't like what has gone on. We want an amendment to again override the decision of the Supreme Court. But I think there should be nothing to override. It's a good judgment to me, with all humility as a constitutional lawyer. Uh, so, Prof, let's talk about the relationship between both uh, the state and the local government. Uh, apparently, uh, people are going to be watching. And uh, how do you think the relationship should proceed now? Because anyone who has resources has power. And so we may begin to see some power interplay. Uh, what do you see? Where there will be some muzzle flexing, <coughs> for now, governors have been treating local government chairmen as their minions, as their appendages. When they say jump, local government chairman, we only ask, we ask the governor, 
how high should I jump? If the governor says run, you ask how fast you want me to run, like Hussein Bolt or like Ben Johnson. <laughs> but now you can't do that. The local government chairman now knows his own area, his own sphere of influence. The state governors now know their own limitations. So the, is, a local government ca chairman can now tell a governor, excuse me, sir, with all the respect, of course, with all difference, excuse me, sir, this money is meant for us. We are to use it on behalf of the people. So you can't tell us to give you part of it and responsible and accountable to the people. And the people themselves will come to the local government council chairman and say, hello, we know you have such an amount. We want you to use it for us. In other words, the three tiers of government, which was brought about since 1976, has now come into play. No longer two tiers. We have been seeing three tiers in theory, but actually two tiers of government in practice, federal government and state government. And what the Supreme Court judgment has said is that these three tiers of government should actually play out, not only in theory, but in practice. So local government chairmen have been energized. They have been empowered. There's no doubt about that, that govern, go, um, uh, powers of state governors has been whittled down. I can also say to me, the power of the federal government Contrary to arguments, has thereby been whittled down because um, hitherto small local government chairman can now also come to Abuja to go and hold that joint allocation uh, meeting with the federal government to know what is coming to them. Not negotiation being done on their behalf. You see, if it, like MK Abiola will say, if it takes a man uh, 20 years uh, to, to learn madness, how many years will you require to, uh, to practice it? If we have been practicing something since 1999 and it is not working out, and we didn't know where to go, and the apex court now decides to show us the way to go, I think it is celebratory, a cause for celebration. That is why in my write-up yesterday, I said I hail the Supreme Court, and I'm seeing it very, I'm, I'm not missing words about it, that it has not made the federal government an overlord over the local government and over the states, contrary to what some people are saying. Rather, the, lo the federal government has now been told, this is your sphere. Stay there. States, this is your own sphere of influence. Stay there. Local government, this is your own sphere of influence that have been uh, uh, clouded and crowded over the years. You now have it. I do not see anything that anyone uh, all right. should worry about at all. all right, I do Prof. not see how that empowers the federal government to now become uh, a don quixote uh, against uh, against local governments and states. I don't, I don't, I don't see it. Uh, we, we hope so also. But in the case of extreme optimism, uh, should the federal government begin to release funds directly to the local governments, uh, let's say next month, August, um, what happens to states where there are 37 local government, uh, uh, local council development areas in addition to the local government areas that have been in contention since uh, the time of former President uh, Olusha Gobasanjo, like Lagos, and in other states to where the creation of LCDAs are in contention. The judgment is clear. Incidentally, it was done under President Tunibu now. And uh, his special advisor has just celebrated the judgment, and that means Tinibu himself celebrated the judgment. Uh, under him, development council areas were created because they wouldn't create a, a, a state like Lagos that is the most popular state in Nigeria with over 25 million people. Was he having how many local governments? So he creatively decided to create development council areas. But what the judgment is saying is, hello... If you are not a democratically elected local government council, you cannot have this money under Section 162, subsections 5 and 6 of the 1999 Constitution. You can't have it. So what it means 
is that money should now be plowed to those local governments that are in existence democratically. But I can tell you that politicians have a way of being creative. All that they can do is that since there are development council areas not recognized by the constitution, neither under by section 7, nor by the later judgment of the Supreme Court, and they are still in existence, all they will do, for example, let's say Ali Moshe local government area, under which I lived for many years until a few years ago when I came to Abuja. If there are development council areas created under it, which is not recognized in section 3 of the constitution, all that they can do is that money should still be sent to that major constitutionally recognized local government area, and they can now meet to say, look, you know that this money has come to you directly, but don't forget that we also now have a development council area. They can do that internally to share. That is their internal business. Nobody can control that one. They can do that. But for now, the money can only go to those local government areas, named in the constitution. Don't forget that they are even named in the constitution. 774 local government areas. They are council. They are named. Their names are there from alphabet A to Z. They are there. Well, that is, those are the local government that the money will now go to. Prof, quite a so whatever of internal arrangement uh, Prof, states me, now have, a number of questions that is left to them. Uh, from our viewers, apparently they want your intervention on some of the gray areas. Uh, by the way, the governors, it looks like they'll be meeting. Uh, they had before said that no, this is not how a federation should operate. Let the state have some sort of control. And earlier on, I, I think you meant to say 52 percent goes uh, to uh, the federal government, while 26 goes to state and 20 uh, goes to local government. But one of the questions uh, our viewers want to know is, so what should be the time frame to conduct the local government elections for states who have a caretaker arrangement? Rivers, for example, says they will conduct in October. With this judgment, do they need to do that as soon as possible, or they can still wait till October, and speaking for other states as well. It is left to them. I have said it again and again. The Supreme Court judgment is clear, as, as clean and as clear as a whistle. If you want local government councils in your state to receive money from the Federation account, then bring them up to be democratically elected. Whether you do it tomorrow, whether you do it in October, whether you do it in January next year, whether you want, don't want to do it at all, it is left to you. Nobody will force you. But the important thing is that if what you have in place is a caretaker local government council, be sure that it will not have money from the Federation account. Hello? I think this is too clear that with all respect, the, the, the deaf can hear it, the blind can see it, the lame can walk it, the numb can feel it. I think it is all too clear that we are not going to get money paid to caretaker gov local governments. If you want money to go to local government councils from the Federation account, the Supreme Court says, such councils have to be democratically elected. So whether in Lagos, which has some development areas, or in rivers, which have Ketika, it's not only rivers. In many of the states across Nigeria, maybe no, no less than 50 to 20, they have a Ketika. And that is what the governors have been doing because they know that these Ketika committees are, are answerable to them. Excuse me. They are answerable to them. So they can pick their supporters and their minions, surrogates, founders, bootlickers, and just put them up in place and say, you are a chairman of local government. So if, for example, let's say uh, one billion comes to the state in the joint state local government account for the local government council, the, look, the governor can just decide to say, well, um, the, in fact, the, the, the council chairman dare not ask questions. All that the governor will do is to say, I'm sending you 100 million naira to run your council. And the chairman will be jumping. At least he, he or she can pay salary to the people, maybe build one or two covers. They can't ask the governor, ah, but sir, 
we know that uh, one, one billion came to the account. Who, who is a chairman of a local government to dare ask the, uh, the governor that kind of question? The governor uh, will again remove him or her the following day be, or that very moment because he is the appointer. He who pays the paper, the, takes the tune. But what the Supreme Court has said is that local government chairman is like you, the governor. He was elected by the people. So it becomes Psalm 105, verse 19. Touch not my anointed. Psalm 109. So Psalm 105, I think, verse uh, 9. I can't remember. Touch not my anointed. It's 105.15, I do actually. my prophets. No <laughs> how. No how. Uh, prof, it's 105. Psalm 105.15. Yes, 105.15. Yeah, 105.15, yeah. yeah. I'm just yeah, mixing them around. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's okay. So 105 verse 15 says, Touch not my anointed. I do my prophets no harm. So the local government chairman says the Supreme Court and now Psalm 105 verse 15, they are now anointed. They cannot be touched by state governors. They have been imbued with that toga of immunity from overbearing, stultifying, suffocating, and asphyxiating state governor's influence. That is what it has done. And I think, to me, is something that is salutary. Some stakeholders are saying that this is, uh, is a bit of an overreach, faulting it that we're going to that centrist point that we're trying to leave as a federalism. Uh, former Governor James Ibori has alluded to that fact that now taking things back to the center is a problem. That's the way they are seeing it. In fact, some people are even calling for INEC to start conducting state elections. And that argument has also ensued about why should the federal government be in charge of any, everything, which is what they are seeing the federal government doing through the back door. I want you to speak to that. Hey, I will not be clamoring for restructuring. It is not the judgment. This judgment to me, I do not agree with that view. We have been clamoring for restructuring. What is the business of the federal government having 67 items on the exclusive legislative list? What is the business of the federal government licensing your vehicles, even having the marriage act that guides how you marry and how you live with your wife and how you separate and how you divorce? What is the business of the federal government having unities so-called unity schools, secondary schools, federal government participating in secondary schools, which will be a matter for states and local governments. We are be clamoring for restructuring. Did they hear that? It is not the judgment that is making it uh, centric. No. Rather, the government is actually breaking it down. The three tiers of government recognizes 1976 and other sections 7 of the Constitution and other sections 2 and 3 of the Constitution have actually been made to come into effect. A local government chairman can now challenge the federal government by saying, I'm entitled to X amount and you are giving me A amount. That is not my due. Before now, they could only do that through the states. But they can now cry out they can now cry out and say, this is not what we are. Don't forget that they have Argon, their association. They can now meet and say, this is not what we are supposed to have. I do not see it as giving more powers to the federal government. Rather, I personally feel it, feel that it is actually taking some powers from the federal government by being made to sit down now with local government council chairmen rather than only governors. I think it, it, some powers have been chipped away from the federal government. The federation account, when they are negotiating, when they are discussing the commissioners for finance, don't they sit down at a round table with the minister of finance? Don't they discuss? A chairman of a local government can now attend that meeting during, fact, during their fact sharing. He can now sit down to know how much is coming to them. That's what the judgment means. He can now sit down with the federal government. How does that make the federal government more powerful when actually it, the circumstances are now extenuating and these powers have been ceded, have been chipped away? I, th I see it the other, from the other angle. I do not see it as making federal government to now suddenly have more powers over local government. 
is the sharing formula, the, share, the sharing is done at a round table. It's not as if the federal government just allocates and say, state, this is your own, uh, local government, this is your own. They all agree as to what should come to each of them. All right. States will now know. Local governments will now know. I think rather than saying it has concentrated powers in the hands of government, for the federal government, I think it has rather chipped away from the powers of the imperial and imperious federal government that can now be challenged by a local government. All right. Um, uh, chairman, well, I prof, see it from that angle. Quite, the judgment is salutary. Quite an interesting time we find ourselves, but the coming days uh, will tell. Still, the governor's are meeting. We understand they're meant to meet and we'll wait to see what their uh, reaction to this would be. But we'd like to thank you so much uh, for providing some insight into this. You say it's very simple. We've been speaking with Senior Advocate of Nigeria, Constitutional Lawyer, Professor Mike Ozakome. Thank you for, for your time. I just want to thank you and I want to thank Nigerians to say Nigeria is a project in the works and that we can get it right through trial and error. By the grace of God, we get it right. God bless Nigeria. Amen to that. And not to forget, touch not my anointed. Very important. Thank you once again, Prof. Well, we'll take a moment now. But just before that, there have been some uh, responses coming in from you across board. This is a big one, really, so you understand why Nigerians are very vested in this. Law Alpha C from Abba has the first one saying... With full autonomy granted to the local government councils, governors' political relevance may have been considerably tampered with. And in a bid to continue to be in charge, there may be political crisis in the state. He says we're watching. And uh, this next one is from Prosper Oyebuchi from Taraba State, who says, Supreme Court's decision is a welcome development. The local government chairmen were elected just like the governors, so a governor has no right to sack an elected chairman or receive the funds. Now, take a look at this next one from Femi Abulude from Ikorudu here in Lagos. For this judgment to be effective, local government elections should be sacrosanct. If the state governors are still selecting their crowdies as chairman, it will not work. So keep your comments coming in, hashtag CTV Morning Brief, or you can do that on WhatsApp right away. We'll take a moment now. When we return, we'll bring you another angle to this conversation. It's really multifaceted. Stay with us right here on the Morning Brief. <laughs>